You know, here at Journeys, we, we are having, uh, I think, a spiritual realization, and part of that realization is that we're not simply here seeking to mitigate the effects of life. Mitigate means to make it less severe. You know, we're not here just trying to tone down life, but we are here to actually impute power to other people. And that is a big difference because if you come to a gathering like this and you're thinking, oh, I don't have anything to give, I'm empty, things aren't going well, I'm just all messed up inside, um, you're not going to get as much from that stance than if you come instead thinking, you know, I'm going to love somebody today. I'm going to look somebody in the eye today, even if it's just one person. And as I do, I'm sending them love. I'm, I'm giving them a prayer. I'm giving them a blessing. And so that places us, uh, Nancy Lee places us in a whole new space, does it? It does. Amen. It does. It does. Amen. And what you're really doing is taking your power back. See, and that's important, that you have power, and the power is for you to be able to give and to touch the lives of, of other people. So, you know, so many times, you know, we, we think, so many times our life is just a reaction. It's a reaction to what's going to happen today. Even when we wake up and our feet hit the floor, we're thinking, what's going to happen today? Lord, what could come my way? And uh, see, that's not what we're here for. We're not here to react. We're here to act. We're here for inspired action. And I think it can begin, you know, just little things like a prayer, turning within, uh, little technologies we do. Uh, and, and part of it is beaming love to other people. Part of it is just saying, saying a little prayer, sending a little prayer to other people. See, that kind of gets us moving, at least in that direction. You know, it's possible for you to, to walk into an environment like a farmer and seed the entire environment with love. I mean, you can walk into a room and just be there. And as you walk in, you think, I'm going to just fill this whole place with love. I'm going to fill this whole place with peace. And if you're thinking in that way, it really brings it home who you really are. Because you're somebody. You see, divinity is inside of you. You're not just this uh, head and body walking around. There's a whole lot more inside of you. And so it's just seeding the environment. You know, I mentioned before doing drive-by, not shootings, but doing drive-by <laughs> blessings and just drive by the neighborhoods and just bless everywhere you go. Now, if you're going to do anything like that, it means you're living with faith. Faith is invisible. Uh, faith, as Tim was singing about the mystical, you, you know, you, you enter into the mystic, you enter into the part that you can't explain, you can't touch it, you can't see it. Some things are invisible, and some of the best things in the universe you can't really see. And those things we see and we can touch are beautiful, but there's a lot more going on than that. So it's a contrast, you know, and I think of it like this. I mean, I think of it, uh, and you can think of it any way you like. I, I think of it as a circle. And so I'm inside my circle. And so there's a circle here. And then there's a circle here. So there's two circles. And uh, in one circle, I would call it spirit living. Now that's invisible stuff. That's when I'm operating. I'm living from within. And I'm living from inside out. Over here, this circle would be, and I may get the circles confused, but this is the ego circle. This is the circle where I've got to manipulate my way through life. I'm, I'm looking around. I'm seeing certain things. I'm hearing certain things. I'm watching CNN and CNN or Fox News or MSNBC, whatever you happen to be watching, is telling you how bad everything is. It's falling apart. And so there you are living from your five senses. Over there in that circle, you're living from spirit. And all of us are living from one of those or the other. All of us are. And so, spirit means, um, you know, I think about a Bible verse. Just thought about this. You know, the Apostle Paul said, set your mind. Set your mind on things above. And that describes the spirit circle. So that means when you wake up in the morning, you, you, it, it's like a TV set. It's like a radio. You set it. You, you turn the dial. And you turn the dial to uh, this day, this minute, this hour, I'm going to set it on spirit. I'm going to live as if these things are true, even though I don't see it. 
That's what faith is. I mean, you know, in what other religion, every religion you want to talk about. That's why in spirit, if you're living there, there's a lot of trust. If you're living in ego, it's not a lot of trust. And, and there you can, you can tell where you are because there's a lot of worry, a lot of doubt, and a lot of fear. Now, let me, uh, let me give you, uh, I don't know, three four points today. The first point is this. Uh, the first point is you've got to, um, you've got to um, choose your world. <laughs> choose, I, I believe, choose, choose your world. And you want to choose your world. She had a phone and she's been taking notes. And so I, I put, I love you. Did you, did you know? <laughs> and so you want to choose your world and you want to choose your world with wisdom. Now you have the ability to do, do that. You have the capacity to be able to choose which of those worlds you're going to live in. Now, we've been brought up to live in the ego world, of course, but we can make that transition. We can move in that way. And I would call it, uh, you know, in the Old Testament, it, it called it um, the promised land. And so you enter into the promised land. You enter into the sacred land. You enter into, I would call it the land of possibility. Because if you're living in spirit, you're surrounded by possibilities, possibilities, possibilities. You're not worrying, oh, what am I going to do? Uh, there's only one uh, hope here. No, in the land of spirit, there's so many things are cooking. So many things are happening. And so you never know, as uh, Forrest Gump said, you never... Was it Forrest Gump? No, I was get confused about that. Forrest Gump wasn't on the island. Uh, it was the, uh, the UPS man on the island, right? The same actor. He's a fed, the FedEx man said, you never know what the tide is going to bring in. And you never know what the tide is going to bring in when you're living in the spirit world because it could absolutely be anything. Now, you are individuals, and I know you know that, and um, probably most of you know that you have a body. We have a couple people here with our bodies today. But, uh, you know, they come occasionally just to check and see what things are uh, what, what's happening. But most of us have bodies, so you've, you've incarnated, which means you've come into the flesh, you've come into this body, and you're here for a reason. Uh, you're an individual. Individual, by the way, means undivided from the whole. And so that means you are totally connected to God. You're totally connected to spirit, but you're expressing right now in this physical body. And the funny thing is, each of us is having our own experience. All of your faces look pretty good right now. You look like you're having a good time. But if I saw you a couple of days ago, your face may have displayed heaven. Or your face may have displayed hell. It just depends. And what it depends on, because all of us are individuals, all of us are undivided from the whole, we're all connected to God, but our world is determined by the filter that we use as we look at life. It's based on our perspective. It's based on our lens. It's based on our point of view. It's just based on, it, it could be based on our beliefs, and it can be based on our unhealed wounds that have happened in, in this lifetime. And so when we do that, and it's a totally ego perspective, but we look at life through those lenses, and then we immediately take, you know, i got this story. You know, this story, my mama did this. And this story, my daddy did this. And this story, somebody did this to me. And then I did that to them. And we begin to take all of our stories and we put them in a big box, turn it into a projector, and then project it out into the world of experience. And then other people projecting stuff too. And they say, yeah, that's how it is. Mine's, mine's the same. Yeah, my toe's hurting too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got a divorce and it was, it was hard. Somebody else might be saying, yeah, it was good. But you know, you never know what the perspective might be. And so my point is this. We look at the world through our tiny little slit lens. We think that's how the world is. But it doesn't really say how, the, that's not really telling us how the world is. It's telling us how we are. And then we project it. And when we project it, it bounces back and we get more of it. So I'm thinking people just don't care about each other. And then I see it happening all over the place. My buddy over here is looking at the world and thinking people really love each other. They really have compassion for each other. And, and he sees that all over the place. 
Because that's what's coming back of that experience. So that makes sense, right? And so then we start asking questions. You know, we wake up and we say, wow, the world is not working. How can I change it? My life is not working. How can I change it? People are driving me crazy. How can I manipulate and change them? And all of those questions, uh, if you picture the, your, your film, your projector, is, and, and so your experience is on the wall there, and you're seeing all of that, and you're saying, how can I change that? How can I change it? How can I change it? And so we're resisting our own film. We're resisting what we're broadcasting. And so then we end up dealing with secondary causative factors. You know, we're dealing with all of those things we've projected instead of dealing with the real thing, instead of dealing with reality. Bob, does that make sense? It does. Because I'm going to say it again. It don't make sense. Okay. So we project stuff. And we swear it's this way. We swear it is. I swear people don't love each other. I swear the world is going to hell in a Gucci bag. I swear people are compassionate. I swear the world is getting better. I swear the world is getting worse. And so you say all of these different things and people believe it and it colors everything and it determines their psychology. It determines how they feel. It determines what they do. And, and they just keep replaying the same thing again and again. And again, and so what they see is what's creating it. And so, you know, if you go back to the circle, I can't remember where the ego is. Is it this one? No, this one. So this is the ego one. And so you see how you can get stuck because you keep replaying the same thing. Somebody comes in and you're kind of sitting there looking like you're meditating. And they say, what are you doing? And you say, I'm thinking. But see, the crazy thing is we're having 60,000 thoughts a day and 99% and, uh, of them are the same thoughts I had the day before, the day before, the day before, the day before. And as Nancy Lee told me, that's called mentation. Mentation is not thinking. Mentation is just having the same thought again and again and again. Uh, it's like people on the Titanic. If they're going down, they say, well, let's, let's uh, rearrange the tables. And so what we're doing is reshuffling. We reshuffle our thoughts over and over and over, have the same thought, the same thought, the same thought, and they keep producing the same thing. And so we're in this ego thing. So I'm recommending that you choose your world. You recognize, okay, there's two circles, and I can live in either one. And if I'm living in the ego circle, some of the things I'm going to feel that will indicate where I am are things like worry and doubt and fear and the need for manipulation. Those things. And that lets me know not that something's wrong with the world. Not really that something's wrong with me. It just said, buddy, this is where you're living. This is how you're thinking. And then I'm recommending that we leap from there and we move to the, uh, the spirit uh, circle. If I'm calling it something else, I would call it the, the land of possibility. The land of possibility. The land of many possibilities. And when we get into that, we begin to feel intensely that we are an emanation of spirit. I am an emanation of spirit. And then that, you see, that's a much higher thing than just this biological kind of thing. And then all of these beautiful qualities like love and joy and peace, all these qualities belong to me. And I begin to sense that and feel that inside um, and then what happens is the whole feeling tone changed. Now I'm not worried about anything. I'm not afraid of anything because I know everything, everything works together for good. No matter if I, even if I can't see what's happening, I still know everything's all right. And so, um, you know, you can really tell, you can tell where somebody is because if you're talking to somebody, and, and all they do is, if all they do is complain, if all they do is criticize, if all they do is they're just very judgmental. I'm not being judgmental about that, understand. I'm just suggesting, just look at it. If you're criticizing, if you're complaining, if you're uh, doing that kind of thing, just be aware that your speech indicates where you're living. And so very simply, there's two worldviews. There's two worlds that you can live in. And what I'm encouraging you to do is simply be aware of that. 
When you wake up in the morning and your feet hit the ground, immediately you're already into worry, doubt, and fear. So you've got to be aware of that. Okay, I get it. Before I even get out of the bed, I'm going to make a um, choice. I'm going to decide today I'm going to live, and I keep bringing myself back to it, in spirit. I'm going to uh, believe that God is working through me. Believe the path is clear as I begin to walk in that direction. I'm going to behave that way. Even in our dreams, what do we do? Worry, doubt, and fear. And so we'll find that our dreams begin to change. As we begin to set this intention, our dreams will begin to talk about possibilities instead of just being stuck on the same kind of stuff. Uh, so I guess that kind of summarizes what I'm saying. So I had, I don't know how many points, maybe three or four. And so the first point is this. You've got to decide. You've got to choose your world. Don't just go through life and let other people choose for you. Don't just say, well, it just depends on how my hormones are today. It just depends on how I had a good meal today or a bad meal today. No, no, it depends on your choice. It depends on you using your brain and saying, I am love. I am peace. I'm choosing this today. And then the second thing is, uh, the second thing is, Ah, yes. The second thing is, once you make your choice, what you want to do is just jump on a roof and start singing. You want to climb up to the highest place you can and just sing your lungs out. Do you know what sing means? S-I-N-G? It means something. I heard Michael Beckwith say this years ago, and, and he said it meant this. Sing, S-I-N-G means, let's see if I can remember, serve, infinite, so far so good, non-negotiable, so good, gratitude, serve, infinite, non-negotiable, gratitude. Okay, so what do you do? You choose the world. Okay, there's two ways I can go. I usually know this one, but now I'm going to choose this one. I'm going to not base my life on what I see and hear. I'm going to base it on my faith, my intention. And then I'm going to see. I'm going to serve infinite, non-negotiable gratitude. And non-negotiable means this. Our gratitude normally goes like this. If it's a good day today, I'm going to be really thankful. If my plan works out just the way I've planned it, I'm going to be really thankful for that. If people treat me in this way, then I'll be grateful. I want to remind you that all the scriptures, wherever you look, they all say the same thing. They all say, be thankful, be grateful. None of them say, be thankful for everything. No, no. They do say in every situation you find yourself, be thankful. There's a difference. Uh, being thankful for everything means you look at each single little item and say, I'm thankful for that, I'm thankful for that. And some things will happen that you will not be thankful for. But in the Bible, you know, I mentioned other scriptures, but in the Bible it says... Uh, Paul wrote this. He said, in all things, be thankful. So I'm in a situation, and I am thankful. Now, looking at the pinpoint items in that situation, I may not like those things. But in that situation, I'm going to be thankful. It's non-negotiable. It's not that I'm going to say, well, let me negotiate, let me make a deal, I'll be thankful for this or this or this. No, because what we're wanting to do is create a whole different kind of life. And so in order to do that, you must choose your world, and then you must choose gratitude, and you can choose gratitude in any situation because you know, because you believe in a progressive universe, you believe in a progressive God, you believe that spirit is good, and so you know, even though you don't see how this is going to work out, something good is going to come from it, unless you begin to push and fight and resist and turn it into a monster of some kind. So, you know, that's just always true. I mean, that's just always true. Um, you say, well, I knew a guy one time, and the doctor told him he was sick, and 
He was thankful you know, in that situation, and he died. Didn't work. Of course it worked. I mean, his body, he made a lady's body down. Sometimes, sometimes you can really have a great attitude, and sometimes your body catches up with that and heals. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't. But even if it doesn't heal, you are eternal. You are evolving. You are growing. You're growing inside this body, and you're going to grow after you leave it. And so you have to keep in mind what all of that means. I mean, you know, we go on forever and ever and ever. So it's non-negotiable. That's good. You know, it may be a lesson you're learning. It may be that you've got this gift inside of you, and it's asleep. Many of you have gifts and talents and capacities, and they are turned off. And so maybe you need a good shaking to activate that gift so it can come out and do what you came to this planet to do. And so that's why you can say, even in that situation, I'm thankful because I know that it's waking me up. Now, you can't just let your mind, and I think, okay, okay one point, choose world. Two points, uh, choose gratitude. But I, I need to say that you can't just let your mind run off wherever it wants to go. Who knows where your mind would go? <laughs> you could end up <laughs> in some bad places. You might say things like, oh my God, I've got problems. Oh, I ain't got no money. Life is bad. This is not going to work out for me. And so your mind is like a little puppy. You've got to put a leash on it. Because look, if you choose your world, and then you say, I'm going to be grateful in, in all situations, then your mind is going to run and jump out the window and run down the road. And you don't know where it's going to go, so you've got to put a leash on it and pull it back. Bring it back. You've got to tell your mind, hey, we're not going in that direction today. <coughs> Get back here. That's what you've got to do. And you've got to do that with your emotional body. You've got a physical body. You've got an emotional body. Your emotional body is wild and crazy. And so your emotional body, you know, you, you wake up and you say, well, today I chose my circle, spirit. I'm going to live in faith all day. Not by what I see, not by what I hear, but by, I'm going to walk in faith. Not by sight, by faith. You're feeling pretty good. And then you say, I'm going to be grateful. I'm going to be thankful. But then you remember, you know. 35 years ago, this happened. Last week, that happened. And I feel sad. I can feel it right now. I feel the need to sit down almost. Oh, I feel sad. Or, I retell myself a story. I can't believe that guy talked to me like that. I, you know, he had no right to talk to me like that, I am so angry. I'm going to get him back somehow. So I'm really living in the anger thing. Your emotional body will put a little leash around you and lead you around. That's how we act. We And we just go, okay, and we just go with it. I'm telling you, you stop because there's a part of you that's not emotion. There's a part of you that's not thought. That part of you is your divinity. Uh, when you are made in the image of God, that means you're able to think above circumstances and situations. So that means you stop, dig your heels in, and you say, emotional body, get back here. We're not going to do that. Somebody says, oh, yeah, but my, my mom and dad got divorced, and that was sad. You just got to get over it. You got to get over it. Yeah, but they hit each other. And they hit me. Uh, you know, I used to run around the house and my dad would do target practice. And so what's your message to me if that's true? Tell me. Shall I spend the rest of this incarnation crying about it? You can't do that. Now, I've got lots of stories, and so do you. Most of you do. We have these stories. We have to just let it go. 
Because you came into this body to do something. You came to do something. If I came to do something and then I say, oh, I'm just overcome by my emotions. I feel so depressed. I just can't do nothing. I'm just going to have to sit here hoping Lola will rub my back. It's sad. <laughs> and then nothing happens. See, nothing happens. Uh, so we've got to get over it because, uh, you know, many of us uh, probably, uh, I know this would make you feel horrible, but maybe you even chose your parents because you wanted their DNA so you could get here to do what you had to do. And so you arrived and you were in spirit and you were ready to go, but everybody around you pulled you over into the ego circle. And then you began to look at the turbulence and maybe somebody said, well, you can't do that. You can't love like that. You can't have compassion like that. You can't be that kind of person. Are you crazy? And so then we began to immerse ourselves in all these sad stories and all of this. And so I'm telling you, you are powerful beyond imagination. But as long as you think you can't because of any reason, then you can't. You can't. But you are in the image of God, which means you have the capacity to think beyond circumstances. So do it. I don't care what happened in an earlier time. Think beyond it. Let it go. Let it go. The other choice is you end up just sitting there and nothing happens. And it's, it's just not worth doing that. It's not worth doing that. You know, somebody said, never surrender your leadership. And I'm telling you, never surrender your leadership. I'm not going to surrender my leadership to my dad. I love my dad, and my dad has transitioned. But some things that he, uh, he even uh, from beyond the grave, he can still lead me if I allow it. My mom could lead me. And in some ways, maybe that's good, and in some choices, that wouldn't be good at all. So you never surrender your leadership. You only surrender to your leadership to truth. You don't surrender your leadership to anything else. Because it, it just will not work. Number one, choose the right world. Number two, choose gratitude, and, and you choose it no matter what. And then um, the third one. And it really kind of, I didn't think about it, but it goes together. So you choose your world, you choose gratitude, and then thirdly, and your life will absolutely change. Your life, everything in your life will absolutely change around. And here's why. Now, you know, I don't know all of you, and so some of you may think this sounds weird, so I'll say it in both ways. Number one, everybody emits a, um, an energy. Many of us would say, yeah, that's right. Some of us, that may sound spooky. So let me say it this way. If two people are fighting and you walk into the room... And they stop fighting. You can feel it. It's in the air. If somebody's been really loving and kind and sweet and you walk into the room, and then whatever is doing, they've been doing, they stop, but you can still feel it. Because there's an energy there. All of us send out energy. Some people uh, call it vibration. Some people call it frequency. You could call it mood. But it goes beyond your skull. It goes beyond your body and it fills a room. And so that means as you begin to choose your world, choose gratitude, people are going to begin to treat you differently because your frequency changes. It changes. Some people walk into the room and you can feel them sucking your energy. Some people, you walk into a room and you feel like, oh, it's so much fun to just be near them. It's all about energy that's happening. And so that means as you choose your energy, there is no neutrality. And so the things in your life, the jobs in your life, the people in your life are going to have to do one of two things. They're going to have to grow and evolve. And as your frequency goes up, theirs will go up. Or your frequency, your energy will go up and theirs is not going to go up. They're going to resist it. And so that means they're going to go. So either they grow or go. That job, if you rise in your frequency, that job may go away. Either the job's going to rise with you or it's going to vanish. 
relationships the same way. And so you can't then, if you rise, and then the relationship, there's such a, 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 a distance, um, cognitive distance, such a distance between the two, you don't want to go back down, you see. And so that's what you do. That's why your life changes when you move in that direction. And so it's really all about, it's about what we're going to do today. We're going to do visioning. I'm not just advertising this. I want to describe what we're doing. If you're going to be, if you're going to be in the ego circle, the ego world, the world based on five senses, then you're going to get all your information from your five senses. Period. You're going to be very logical rational, you can write things down, and you can base your life on the news. Base your life on what you see, what you hear, what you read. If you want to live by faith, then it's not going to be by sight. It's not going to be by what you hear. Then you're living in a different way. That means you want to live from God. You want to live from spirit. Now, I don't believe God is a man in the sky. I believe that God is spirit. I believe God is in all of you. I believe God is around us, in us, through us, always here, fully available to every person. So if you're going to take your guidance from spirit, that's where the visioning comes from. Visioning means direct information from spirit. So either you get your information through your five senses, or you get your information through faith from spirit that's within you. And that's what we're going to do this afternoon is we're going to talk a little bit about it. Then we're going to do a level one meditation, get a little bit, get things going a little bit. And then we're going to do a level two meditation. And then in level two meditation, we're going to ask questions of spirit. And at that point, you're going to be so open, so available, so willing, so ready then you're going to have those direct answers from spirit. That's how you live in that spirit circle. If you're leaving, living in spirit circle, you can't be getting your information always from the physical. And so there's a mystical element. And that's true in, in all religions. Does that make sense? I mean, that's true in all religions. That's what, it's, that's what it's about. So people say, well, I just need some guidance. That's how you get it. I just need clarity. That's how you get it. I just want to know what God wants. That's how you get it. Uh, why did you come here in the first place? That's what I want to know. Why did I come here? That's how you get it. You get it through visioning. Now, we're going to do it for individuals. But we're also going to do it for our community as a whole. But we're also very much going to do it as individuals and then uh, continue to, to work on them. But I'll tell you this. You can't... Uh, do that by going by these secondary causative factors. Like you can't really deal with spirit if you're going to be focused on illness. Because that's a secondary causative factor. You can't do that if you're going to be focused on a problem. Because God doesn't see problems. Only we see problems with our five senses. Spirit is beyond problem. And so instead of looking at problems, we're going to look at solutions. Instead of looking at issues, we're going to look at truth, what's real. And, and so that takes us to a whole different place. Nancy Lee, you got any questions? <laughs> no. Not right now? Okay, and again, let me say this. You don't want to let your mind go unchecked because your mind will set a set point. Your mind will keep you in your comfort zone. If you're living in that ego circle, um, it will keep you in that circle, in your comfort zone. In fact, it will lock you up in a cage. And so what you're doing when you're visioning, when you're saying, what does spirit want? What, you know, when you begin to go in that direction, the cage is unlocked, and that's when you're absolutely free. Say the word with me. Stretch. Stretch. That's what we have to do. Because you see, we're in this little circle, and, and when you're in that little circle, ego circle, right? Ego circle. And the first thing we do is we put our foot out, and we feel very uncomfortable, and we pull it back in. What we have to do is stretch. 
and stretch. And as we stretch, eventually that circle begins to enlarge. But we want to stretch. We want to stretch our minds. We want to stretch what's possible. Because today, if you're in the visioning session, you may get some impulse and your first response is going to be, oh, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do that. I must have gotten crossed up here. That message must have had to be for Bob. I couldn't do that. That's impossible. If it comes to you, it's yours. And so then the only question is, well, what must I do in order to do that? How can I grow in order to do that? What must I let go of in order to do that? See, that's what we do. Can you imagine what would happen if we really individually started to do that? Now, there may be some special areas that you're working on, and so let me mention those as I get ready to finish. Uh, you may be working on your body. You may be working on health. You may be working on relationships. You may be working on finances. I mean, you know, we talk about all of those things. And the first thing I want you to know is you're surrounded by possibilities. You're not backed into a corner with no place to go. You've got to get out of that ego world and walk into the land of opportunity, the land of possibility. And so you know there's lots of possibilities all the way around you. And you've got, you can check your, your uh, different areas, like you check your mental body. You ask yourself, well, am I a complainer? Like I mentioned a while ago, right, am I judgmental? Am I negative all the time? Check your mental body. Check your emotional body. Do I carry around negativity all the time? I refuse to forgive that person. I refuse. Somebody says to me, I have a right to hate that person. And that's just so crazy. I mean, it's like somebody saying, I have a right to shoot myself. Bang, 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 bang. Because that's what you're doing. Not forgiving someone doesn't bother those people. It hurts you. And so you may have a right. You may have reason to be angry with somebody. But you have to realize that's hurting you. So that's part of the emotional body. We, we forgive. We let go. We let go of those things. Uh, you know, it's... Um, I suppose uh, some of it, and, and this is hard to do because you'd have to remember this. Maybe after the visioning session you will. You'd have to remember before you get out of bed in the morning, you're going to choose your world. And then before you get out of the bed, you're going to make a commitment and you're going to say, I'm going to serve infinite non-negotiable gratitude. And if somebody in your family that heard this too, if they catch you going down the wrong road, they're going to say, Up! Ah! We used to say that to our dog. Up! Ah! <laughs> He's about to do something. Up! Ah! And he would go, you know, ooh. <laughs> and so maybe that's what we need. Or if you do it, just go ahead and say it really loud in your, with your family. You're sitting there. You say, well, let me tell you how bad my day was. Up! Ah! <laughs> and then you stop yourself. In some way, stop yourself. Stop the story. Stop the story. Stop the story. You see different uh, because, I mean, you do see different because you're not basing. See, that's the thing. You, part of it is you're not basing your life uh, in the same way. So you see something that you used to call negative come along, but now you go, huh, well, I wonder there might be a blessing inside that. Maybe that's calling me to activate a gift inside of me. So actually, it's the best friend I've ever had. Although I didn't like it. So that's possible sometimes. The other thing, I keep thinking surprise package. Because if you imagine a stick from here, and it goes up to the ceiling. And so that's our emotions. And so low emotions would be um, despair. Despair's low. Depression. Sadness. Coming up now, anger. You know, it's much better to be angry than depressed. It's actually higher to be angry. If you're really so depressed, you're just so sad, and uh, you, you just you don't feel like doing anything. But if you rise, if you take a step up, then you're angry, and then you're just really pissed off. And you now have energy, and you just want to go punch somebody. 
Now, the thing is, you don't want to stay stuck in anger. The beautiful thing, and this is all from Abraham material, but the beautiful thing is, if you are... I'll just do it this way. If I'm in a very negative emotion, say I'm depressed, and then I do some spiritual technologies, maybe meditation, maybe some uh, affirmation, some other things, and I take one step. Now I'm not in despair. Now I'm sad. God, that's fantastic. Because if you can take one step, you can take another one. And then you can take another one. And you can take another one. Now sometimes people want to be here at the bottom. Well, I'll do it this way. Yeah, up here. They're at the bottom, and they want to be at the top. Odds are heavy. It's going to be hard to move from the bottom to the top. You've got to go in steps. Sometimes you can. That's fantastic. But if you think that's what you have to do and you rise two, three steps, you'll still think you're not doing well. But you actually are because if you can move one step, then you can do another one. The next day you can do another one. The next day you can do another one. But if you're down here, you'll get surprise packages. And so that means you lost your job. Maybe that was because we would say of your frequency. The job would say it's because you have such a bad attitude. It's describing the same thing, just using different words. Um, and then uh, you have a car accident. Surprise package. It fit that frequency. Though. And then a deer jumps uh, uh, you know, in your other car and breaks the windshield and almost kills you. Another surprise package. What happens, people tell me, and it's in true of my life, as you rise and get higher, where now you're like, um, I mean, if you could get to you know, high places like joy, peace, these God attributes, joy, love, those kind of things, there'll be surprise packages too. Odds are they're going to be beautiful. Occasionally, something comes in, maybe it's not so beautiful. Sometimes that happens because it's exactly what you needed to grow more. To get you out of the stuck place. But surprise packages always come and you improve the likelihood of getting really nice surprise packages if you practice every day feeling good. Because in that sense, there's nothing more important in the world than feeling good. About good, what do I mean? Joy, peace, gratitude. Gratitude is at the top. If you can be grateful, slowly everything is going to change. So does that help? Okay. So, so that's, that's how it happens. So it's really good. So practice this. Choose your world. That means you choose spiritual world. You're not going to base everything on physical stuff. And you're going to walk by faith. And you're going to choose number one gratitude, which is high, high, high. And that doesn't mean you're, you're going to say, oh, I just love this. I love that I got a ticket. Uh, I love that um, I broke my leg. You're not going to be thankful for every single thing that happens, but in every situation, you're going to be grateful because you know in a progressive universe, everything that happens is for your good. Everything that happens is for your good. Everything that happens is for your good. And if you believe that, you just excel. You just rise and rise and rise.